Ticket number one. R1, 192.168.11, can't ping R2, 10.002. Diagnose and resolve. Use RIP V2 for all route advertisements. Do not shut down any interfaces and do not remove any network statements. Okay, let's look at the layer three topology diagram. R1 has an IP of 192.168.1.1 and according to the ticket it cannot ping R2's 10.002 address. There's no indication of how routing is configured but the ticket says use RIP v2 for all route advertisements. One thing is obvious though, R1 and R2 are on separate subnets so some IPv4 routing has to take place. Let's jump over to R1. Let's go ahead and try to ping 10.002 and source it from the 192.168.11 address and we'll set a timeout of 1 so that we're not waiting for a bunch of pings to timeout. Okay, that fails. Now let's do a show IP route 10.002. And we can see R1 is learning the route from 192.168.1.10 which is switch one according to the diagram. Let's go ahead and try to ping switch one. Ping 192.168.1.10 and that does work. All right, let's jump on over to switch one. And here, let's do a show IP route to 10.002. Now switch one has an interface in the 10.000 slash 24 subnet. So it's sitting on the same layer two segment as R2. That means switch one should be able to ARP out, get R2's MAC address, and then forward traffic directly to R2's MAC address. Now, let's go ahead and check the ARP table. Show ARP 10.002, and there is the MAC address. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this here. And now let's do a show MAC address address, and then paste in the address and it is off of gig 1.1, which faces switch 4. Let's go ahead and try to ping here, 10.002, time out of 1, and we'll source it from 10.0010. And we get no response. Hmm. All right, let's go to switch 4 now. And let's do a show MAC address address and then I'm going to go ahead and paste in that same address and the MAC address is off of gig 1 slash 3 which faces switch 5. Okay so from here on switch 4 let's try to ping both switch 1 and R2. Ping 10.002 and we'll repeat that 10 times and that works and then ping 10.0010 repeat 10 times as well and that works. Great. Okay. Now, let's go over to switch 5. Let's do another show MAC address address and paste in that MAC address again. And from switch 5, the MAC address is off of gig 2.2, which faces switch 6. All right, let's try those pings again. Ping 10.0.0.2, time out of 1, repeat 10. That works. Ping 10.0.0.10. Time out of one, repeat 10, and no response here. Interesting, no response at all. Let's try that ping again. Okay, still no response. All right, let's dig into this a little bit deeper. Let's do a show ARP 10.0.0.10, and let's go ahead and copy the MAC address we get here, and then show MAC address address, paste that in, and to get to switch 1, which is 10.0.0.10, we need to egress the gig 1 slash 2 interface, which faces switch 4. So let's go ahead and see if we can ping switch 4. 10.0.0.40, repeat 10, and that works no problem. So switch 5 can get to switch 4, but notice something here. Switch 1 and switch 4 are connected via an ether channel. So it seems that the breakdown is actually going to be somewhere between switch 4 and switch 1. So let's jump back over to switch 4. Let's ping 10.0.0.10, which is switch 1, source it from 10.0.0.40, and that works. Interesting. So if switch 5 pings switch 1, we get no response, but switch 5 can ping switch 4, 
and switch 4 can ping switch 1. So it looks like the source address actually makes a difference here. All right, let's go ahead and check the ether channel config here on switch 4. Show ether channel summary. Now gig 10 and gig 11 are members of port channel 1. This looks good. Everything looks normal here. Let's jump over to the other side of this link, switch 1, and check the port channel setup there. Ping 10.0.0.40, source 10.0.0.10, and that works. Okay, so this is really starting to look like a port channel issue. Let's do show ether channel summary. Gig 1.0 and gig 1.1 are bundled into port channel 1, but look at gig 1.3. It's in a suspended state. Now, what is gig 1.3? Well, if you look at the diagram, it's actually connected to switch 3, and that's just wrong. It should not be part of a port channel at all. Let's take a look at the config for gig 1.3. Show run interface gig 1.3. Yep, and there it is, channel group 1 mode active. Let's go ahead and fix this. We'll just do int gig 1.3 and remove channel group 1 mode active. All right. Now let's go ahead and ping 10.0.0.2, source it from 10.0.0.10. So again, we're trying to ping R2, and that works. Okay, good. So let's go back to R1 and see if the ping works from there. Here we are in R1. We want to ping R2, 10.0.0.2, and still not working. Okay, this is aggravating. All right, well, let's be sure that R2 actually has a route back to R1. We're pinging from R1 to R2, but R2 has to send that response back. Let's jump over to R2. And we've got some recursive routing errors here. Okay, this might be a clue. Let's go ahead and continue on. Show IP route 192.168.11. And the route is there but it's via this Tunnel 12 interface. All right, interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at that route again. And interesting, it looks like it's changed. Now we have an infinite metric. It says it's inaccessible. Let's wait a few moments, try it again, and okay, now the route is completely gone. So we basically have a flapping route here. Now, the route that we did see initially is via tunnel 12. So let's take a look at that interface. Show int tunnel 12. Notice the destination here. It's 192.168.11. That's R1. So what appears to be happening is the tunnel comes up. R1 sends R2 its rip routes over the tunnel. And then R2 realizes, hey, I can get to the 192.168.1.0 network over the tunnel. So then it installs that route. But as soon as iOS sees that, it says, uh-uh, you can't do recursive routing, and it shuts the tunnel interface down. That's what that recursive routing error was that we saw when we first logged on to R2. Now, this should look familiar because we actually have seen this in previous courses in the CCNP learning path. But how do we fix this? We can't shut down the tunnel, and we can't stop the RIP advertisements from going across it. So what does that leave us? Well, we can actually try to adjust the administrative distance of that RIP route that we just saw. Let's go ahead and do a show run section router RIP. Now, if you look at the very bottom, notice that command distance 120. Now, any routes learned from 12.12.12.1, which is R1, that tunnel interface, those routes are going to get installed in R2's IP routing table with an administrative distance of 120. So what we can do is we can effectively stop those routes from getting installed by changing the administrative distance to 255, make it unreachable. Let's go ahead and try that. Router rip distance 255 12 and now let's go ahead and clear the IP routing table, clear IP route star, and then we'll do a show IP route 192.168.1.1, and uh, it's still not there. Why not? Come to think of it, how did the tunnel even come up to begin with? Well, the tunnel coming up is really sort of an illusion. All that really happened was that 
R1 sent unicast GRE packets to R2, R2 received those packets, and it brought its tunnel interface up in response to that. But R2 never actually received R1's RIP advertisements over the underlying network. It got the advertisements encapsulated inside the GRE tunnel, but not over the underlying network. So to put this more succinctly, R2 received unicast GRE tunnel packets, but it did not receive RIP v2 multicast packets over the underlying network. And in fact, you would not expect that to happen anyway because R1 is on a different subnet and RIP v2 multicast packets don't leave the broadcast domain. Now, that's confusing, right? So let's dig into this a little bit more. Let's do a show IP protocol. And I want to go down to routing information sources. Now look at those sources. We have 12.12.12.1, which is R1's tunnel interface, 10.0.0.40, which is switch 4, and 10.0.0.60, which is switch 6. Now, in order for R2 to get its route to 192.168.1.0, it will have to learn it from switch 4 or switch 6. But look at the last update from switch 6. It was 1 minute 11 seconds ago. Now that's kind of a long time to go without updates. It's not a really long time, but it's a sort of long time. Let's go ahead and check that again here. And now it's a minute and 56 seconds, so it's growing. All right, how do we proceed here? Do we just have switch 4 and switch 6 advertise the route? Well, let's look at the layer 3 topology diagram. Now remember that R1 goes through switch 1 to get to R2, but what should R2 use as its next hop? We've actually got lots of options here, but seeing as switch 6 is R2's only way out to the rest of the network, it makes sense to have switch 6 be the next hop. Let's go to switch 6. Let's go ahead and do a show IP route 192.168.1.0. And switch 6 has its VLAN 100 interface in the 192.168.1.0 network. Let's do a show IP protocols. And it's not advertising the 1.0 network. So let's go ahead and fix that. Router RIP network 192.168.1.0. Okay, now let's jump back over to R2. Let's do a show IP route 192.168.1.0. And awesome, it's there. Okay, great. Let's wait a few moments and check it again. Now this looks good, but this tunnel interface seems to be bouncing. It seems to be going up and down. So let's check that route again. And oh, okay, now it says network not in table. All right, so we've got another flapping route here. Let's uh, do another show IP protocols. And there you go, the tunnel just came back up. So it's definitely bouncing here. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Now, notice the hold down timer here is 20 seconds, and after 30 seconds, the route gets flushed. So, it looks like perhaps Switch 6 is not sending updates at least every 20 seconds. Let's check that route again. So, it's 7 seconds was the last update, 10 seconds. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it up to 20. Okay, there we go. Now it's showing an infinite metric. So yeah, definitely Switch 6 is not sending updates at least every 20 seconds. So let's jump on over to Switch 6. And here we'll do another show IP protocols. And yes, indeed, it's sending updates every 30 seconds. So what this means is that just as R2 flushes the route, Switch 6 advertises it again and R2 reinstalls it. So that's why we're seeing that route disappear and reappear and also why we're seeing the tunnel go up and down. Well, this is actually an easy fix. We'll just decrease the hello timer to, let's say, 15 seconds. So we'll do router rip timers basic 15 and then we'll leave the rest the same 180, 180, and 240. Now let's go back to R2. All right, the tunnel is up. Let's do a show IP route again. Still showing an infinite metric. Let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, there it is. Let's go ahead and try pinging here. Ping 192.168.11, and we'll repeat this. How about 80 times? 80 is a good number. 
And if all of these succeed, which they do, that looks like we may have solved the problem. So let's jump back to R1 now. We'll do a ping 10002. And this time I'm gonna repeat this 200 times because I'm feeling lucky here. If we've done everything right, all of these pings should succeed. Let's make sure they do. And they do. All right, so I will say it's safe to say that this ticket is solved.